Hey sales and marketing professionals, this is part three of our online marketing plan for manufacturers. Today we're going to dive into buyer personas. We're going to put together a plan to really understand our best buyer and apply it to all of our marketing. So let's get right to it. You know how today's buyer is a little different than they were five to ten years ago? You know, they don't pick up the phone when you call them. They tend to mark you as spam if you email them, kind of unsolicited. They really just generally don't want to talk to you. It's because they're a completely different animal than they were before. They've got all this information at their fingertips and they don't need you harassing them to give it to them. All of these old tactics are really a symptom of not having the right context around your buyer, right? You're not in the right place at the right time with the right message. You are bothering them at dinner time or calling them on their lunch break trying to start up a conversation. That's not what they want. They want you to be where they are when they need you. And that's what buyer personas are going to help us do. Buyer personas help us to really understand your best buyer as the engineer or the professional buyer or the executive that they are as opposed to a broad range of demographic details, age ranges, education levels, and marital statuses, which really don't tell us much about the actual person and what makes them tick. We need to be able to relate to our best buyers as human beings not just a demographic profile. So what's a good broad-based definition of a buyer persona? Think of buyer personas as a fictional representation of your best buyer and what they think throughout their buying process from the moment that they recognize they have a problem or opportunity uh, until they decide to go with you as their solution provider. So it's important to remember that your buyer persona is not a specific best buyer that you have. So if you've worked with Jenny at XYZ Company for 20 years supplying them the parts that they need and you just love working with them, it's easy, uh, they appreciate what you do, they pay you fairly, and everything is wonderful. Jenny is, is um, representative of your buyer persona, right? She has characteristics, or that company has characteristics of uh, a buyer persona, but you don't want to just target Jenny, because by just targeting Jenny, you're excluding Jim, Tim, Bob, and Sue, everywhere else that may be an ideal buyer for you. So you want to take a clump of your best buyers and, and get an idea of all of their characteristics. Why are they best buyers? How do they go about their buying process? Because it's, it's going to vary a little bit from buyer to buyer. So your buyer persona will be solid if you can answer all of the W questions, right? Who, what, when, where, why, and then ultimately how, which isn't a W, but you get the point. So you might be thinking, Donnie, this persona thing sounds great, but where in the heck am I gonna gain all these insights? Well, it starts with, Primary research and secondary research, okay? So your primary research is things like interviews and surveys. We want to grab a, a range of six to 10 existing customers that fit this profile of being an ideal perfect buyer, uh, as well as companies that maybe you lost along the way. You know, for whatever reason, they went another direction and you've lost their business. And then also um, maybe some prospects that you're working with that may potentially buy from you. These are all great interview sources. You're gonna need about 30 minutes of their time to ask them some very broad range questions the biggest being why so when you ask them a question about you know what motivated your company to start your research process before you found us they provide you an answer you say interesting why is that why should be your go-to question over and over again because in the why is where the insights are for where you need to be online what content you need to produce and how your marketing can reach them the second part of primary research surveys is great for those individuals that are probably not not comfortable being interviewed but willing to share some insights you're not going to get as many as you will with an interview because you can't continuously probe for question or probe for deeper answers but you can set your survey up with why's as well why did you answer that way um, and that, that's a great from the horse's mouth uh, primary set of, of information so you want to log all this if you can record your calls obviously with their approval or even video would, would be even better or in person on video so you can see their mannerisms and how they handle things um, you know that's a wealth of information for your sales and marketing. And then you have your secondary research, and this is data mining, right? You have a CRM, you have uh, past customer information, you can dive into uh, wh what were some of the processes we went through to close XYZ client that has been a phenomenal success for our company. You know, so your salespeople are a good resource, your customer uh, account representatives are a great research, uh, resource, excuse me, Pull all that data together and culminate it into one uh, pile of research that you're then going to work on 
to establish your buyer persona. So once you've completed this round of research, and remember, this is an iterative process, so over time, you're gonna wanna do more interviews, you're gonna wanna get more secondary research, and you're gonna wanna put them together to evolve your persona and make sure you have a better understanding. But at this point, once you've gone through an initial stage of research, it's time to put your persona together and start to document the actual profile. Now, I've linked an awesome resource down in the description, completely free resource, includes a worksheet for taking this information that you've gathered, all this research, and putting it into an actual buyer persona. It also uh, dives deeper into some of the items that I've already covered here in terms of research um, and maybe questions that you should ask during your persona interview and what the whole process looks like. It's called the Ultimate Guide to Buyer Personas for Beginners, so it's linked below in the description. Make sure you grab that. After you've built your buyer persona, there's a few tips that I want you to take away. One, if your persona ends up living in a file on a shared drive somewhere and you never refer to it, this has been a complete waste of time and it's going to negatively impact your online marketing plan, obviously. So if you're a sales or marketing professional, as I'm assuming you are, print that sucker out and stick it on your wall next to your desk. Keep it front and center. Who are you marketing to? Who are you selling to? Constantly remind yourself of, would this persona like what I'm doing? Would they respond well to it? Is it going to be the right place, the right time, with the right message? All right, our next step in the online marketing plan for manufacturers is to define this persona's buyer journey, which really goes from awareness when they first decide that they have a problem, through consideration, what are their options for solving this problem, to decision, why do they pick you over your competitor? And that will be in our next video. So again, remember there's resources in the description below that are gonna help you build your persona. There's also some great statistical resources in the description below that give you some great benefits to using buyer personas, as well as a couple blog posts that I think are really gonna help with the overall understanding personas. So if you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe below to make sure you get all of the videos in the series of the online marketing plan for manufacturers. Thanks.